listeners. If you need a job, we have a lot. This facility doesn't need to make money. It makes the money elsewhere. Trying to make an impact, especially for younger people. That get a part off the machine, test it, don't like it, go make an offset, make a new one. It's right there, right that now. That same yeah. day. We're being selective because you only have so much time and availability in machines of who we interact with for that. Yeah, we have so much growth. We're growing as fast as we can. There's actually labs here that they can make a heartbeat on a table so you can have the doctors come in and do the test if we're like placing some implant into the heart. So marrying the two ideas of design and the medical side of it with the actual manufacturing side of it. So Listen up, America. This is the American Made Podcast, the show that highlights America's business leaders and experts in all aspects of the manufacturing industry. If it's made in America, you'll find it here. China. 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 Made in America. Products made with American heart, American sweat. Now, your host of the American Made Podcast, Jason J. Webb. What's up, America? It's Jason Webb. And with me today is C Axis Inc. They specialize in medical device manufacturing. And uh, sitting across from me is Jared Haley, the president. How are you doing, Jared? Good, good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. And to his right is Dennis Olson, the director of business development. How are you doing, Dennis? I'm good. Again, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. So, I don't know. Let's kick it off with Jared, uh, C Axis. So one thing that you talked about before we finally got this thing rolling was the history of C-Axis and your dad is the founder. Correct. I think that's pretty, uh, that's, uh, pretty unique in the sense, his background and how he got to the place he is. And you guys are doing quite well. So let's start with the history of C-Axis. Go from there? Yeah, yeah. Right. So <clears throat> CX started with uh, with an idea. Um, Jeff Haley worked his way around different uh, manufacturing uh, facilities. He worked for Honeywell, Lion Tech, uh, Remley, uh, Lumonix. So he got a taste of quite a diff- uh, few different sectors. Um, and was he working on like the uh, the line making parts, or was he more you know, of like an office position? He started off. He's an electrical engineer, big electrical nerd. Uh, so loves that. So he <laughs> he came up through that uh, at Honeywell, and then uh, got promoted uh, into program management. Ended up running uh, one of their plants. Um, so kind of worked his way up through in upper management. Um, and then through that, he uh, moved from defense into medical manufacturing over with Remley. Okay. So he was doing program management and then also running a plant at Remley. And that... Uh, Remley's kind of, pretty big, aren't they? Very big. Yeah. yeah. They're leasy now. Leasy now, yeah. Yeah. Leasy. So in his time there, he basically, <clears throat> you know, had a lot of contacts, uh, and, and one of the voices, many of the voices in his customers, uh, were complaining that they, there were no good medical manufacturers that were targeting low to mid, uh, volumes. So, um, through that time and some savvy land deals, he, uh, accumulated enough money to start his own business and servicing that like lower to mid uh, volume market. And that's so where what does we that were. mean lower to mid? Can you give me some numbers? Basically, uh, at that time, you know, the bigger players in the in the game weren't taking any orders under a million dollars, so oh, wow. <clears throat> they weren't able to really get you know much development or you know kind of the lower lower volume devices, uh, higher complexity, you know, without that production uh, profit margin, uh, they weren't very interested. So yeah. he kind of grabbed a group of guys and and a lot of like technical guys and came in and started you know machining away on hundred to two hundred piece orders and you know building up a very vast. Uh, customer list. I think we had like 200 at one point in our second year, mm. you know, but each of them, you know, representing maybe 10 to $50,000. So, you know, it's a lot of diversity, but uh, really cut our teeth in the technical side of things going through that many different products. Yeah. So yeah. you just seen, seen a, a need and filled it. Yep. Right. Yep. What was it? Do you remember those days, those early days? I came on in his second year. So okay. how old were you? I was 16. 16. <laughs> yeah. He did. Guy broke his arm and he needed somebody to run a lathe. So he thought that I was too lazy sitting on the couch watching TV in the summer. So yeah, put you to work. Put me to work. Yep. Yeah. So how many employees were back then? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yep. And funding wise, is it difficult to get something like that started? Back then it was less. Uh, now the barrier to entry is quite a bit heavier. Um, okay. val- validation and FDA regulation was quite a bit less lower back then. So okay. um, back then. 
you can get away with it a little, a little less, less involved monetarily. Yeah. To, right now, if you were to try and start something like this, you know, you, you wouldn't have production for over a year. So you need to be able to run just because of the regulations. Yeah, just to get validation through the FDA takes six years, six months to a year. Um, certified ISO, yeah. and that's that's from when you submit parts. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, the new guy coming in off the street, he's going to have a tough go. He's going to have a real tough go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine was, just, and I was just talking about this on the insurance side of things. That I, I do that on on the side when I'm not doing the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And right now, uh, it's real hard to get insurance placed. They call it a hard market. Mm-hmm. And so we go into this comparative rater, right? So if you want homeowner's insurance, you go in this comparative rater, you put in the information once, it sends it out to all the insurance companies. They're supposed to send you quotes back, and, you know, see who's coming with the best deal, and you complete it from there. But, I mean, just a year ago, you send it out to 10, you're going to get 10 quotes back. Today, you send it out to 10, you get like two quotes back. There's just so later. many of the underwriting criteria has gotten so tough right now. Yeah. Right. And like if you had a hail claim in the last five years, a lot of them won't even consider you. Really? So, yeah, we're mm-hmm. talking like, man, these these new agents you know, just starting out now. Mm-hmm. Good luck, bro. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't want to be them. Yeah. How yeah. Do you build your book. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of where <clears throat> we were blessed and very lucky because we got in at a time before those regulatory uh, requirements came in and <clears throat> probably year three or four, a lot of our customers kind of brought us along with them as they learned with the FDA and what the new requirements for yeah. were for. So we kind of kept uh, right on the front edge of the wave um, yeah. and, and were brought along by them to help us develop our quality system and maintain compliance. But I look back at where we are right now. You know, you would need probably five million minimum to start a small shop befo- yeah. before you even see a dollar. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, the big change happened about two thousand five. Yep. The guidance, big recall happened. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Recall on what? They had an issue with Guide one of their wires. products that had a kid, a, a younger child died with one of their implants, and it created a huge thing in the market. And when they went the back, fact that everybody, all you manufacturing in the medical all, device, exactly. Right? So if you're making a manufacturing part, then for the time, guidance was no longer a, a company. They went through all your books, and then it changed how they, they interact. All the medical device companies, how they interact, then with the contract manufacturers, it completely changed after that. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned like document storage. If somebody makes a sketch of something on a piece of paper, you got to save that. Right? If it if it's original data that applies to any product manufactured, uh, that cannot be altered or destroyed. So, <clears throat> like you can't use before all of these regula- regulations happened, mm. all of our quality data was stored in Microsoft Excel. Mm. Uh, and then when this wave came along, you know, because somebody could go edit that later. Oh, so any, any yeah, permanent record. I mean, mm-hmm. it, you'd be shocked at how many major uh, OEMs are still writing all of their inspection data by hand. Because the validation of, of your computer software that needs to be done to be able to store any original data for a medical device is so high, it costs millions of dollars to do. There still, <laughs> we, we got off paperless <clears throat> three years ago. We were still, three years ago, we were writing down every dimension by hand because the, the validate, validation requirements were so high. Crazy. Yeah. So 16, even, even with CXs, <clears throat> I mean, since then, I mean, was that your career path out of the gate? No. no, yeah, we we grew up on a little farm out in Corcoran, so we were all kind uh, of engineering. I live in Buffalo. Oh, okay. I yeah, yeah. Far. yeah, yeah. So we live right next to the Hennepin County Fairgrounds. We used to. Oh yeah. So I grew up out there, and uh, you know, my I was always math engineering side of things, but <clears throat> you know, my my father's edict to the children was, "You're not working for me. I don't want to be nepotism. I don't want any of that in the family." Um, but then when he needed you, you could work for him. <laughs> <laughs> like so, the guy that broke his arm? Is yeah, that what it was? exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, um, no, but that, that I, I came in, and at 16, I, I, I really had an affinity for it. And I I figured that laid out pretty quick. So yeah. um, I went back the next summer. They still needed help. And then, uh, you know, I was already going to go for engineering, so I studied mechanical engineering, but I didn't want to work for him, and he didn't want me to work for him. So <clears throat> I moved out to California. And I worked at uh, Medtronic for a while, so I was running their, oh, really? running their machine shop, doing all their uh, their stents for their uh, tissue valves, the okay. heart, heart valves. So I was okay. doing that, and 
I got promoted to run their machine shop. And then he kind of called me. He's like, well, wait a minute. You're, you're good at this. <laughs> I, like, uh, I need an engineer. Do you want to come work for me? Yeah, right. I was like, no. Uh, <laughs> but he's a, he's a very charismatic man. So he, he talked me into it. Uh, then I worked and ran their engineering department uh, for probably six six years, seven years. Um, and then we had, you know, I told them that I was, I was going to leave cause it's too cold. <laughs> so, uh, at that juncture I was, you know, just kind of sick of waking up, scraping ice off my car. So yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So he's <laughs> like, well, I got a production manager job in Puerto Rico. You want to go down there? I was like, hell yeah. So yeah, yeah. moved down there about 12 years ago. Um, then I, after about three, four years, I took over general management down there. Okay. And then about Five years ago, um, I, I basically went into the VP president role. Uh-huh. So I've been overseeing all of our all of our operations since then. Awesome. Yeah. Just working your way up that ladder, man. Working my way up. Yeah. Yep. Has your dad still working with the company? He is. He's he's has a less hands on okay. uh, role now, but he's he's he loves what we do and he's very engaged. So it's yeah. he and I like we can't help but talk about it. My mom has rules at dinner, yeah. okay. <laughs> but yeah. uh, so we're always chatting, and he's he's got a, obviously a great viewpoint, and uh, he's built a pretty pretty cool thing here. So yeah. it's his baby, so he's always got a hand in it, but he no longer has the stress. I would say. So Medtronic was a blip in my history. Um, I used to be a chiropractor. Okay. And I discovered, you know, I like the business aspect of chiropractic, but I didn't like the patient treatment stuff. Mm-hmm. Usually it's the other way around, right? So I got out of it and I interviewed first with Johnson & Johnson in their sutures and hernia mesh division. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That, that's a process going through their, their interview process, man. Any, any uh, of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I made it to the final one. I was like number six, right? <laughs> Doing ride alongs. The first was the first couple were like over the phone. Then there's a face to face. Then there's a couple ride alongs where they're kind of observing me, my interaction with their yeah. clients. And yeah, then they flew me out to Phoenix, Arizona, at some swanky hotel that they were having an event at, like some hoorah session, right? Mm-hmm. And I got interviewed by three people sitting out in the lobby. And the guy that sent me out there, he's like, yeah, yeah, you pretty much got it. It's just a rubber stamp. You just, you know, you're good. Well, I didn't get it. (laughs) (laughs) What did that guy know? Yeah, right. Uh, (laughs) Apparently, there was another person that was up for the same position, and they chose that person. I was young. I was young. You know, looking back on it, the the reason why they told me I didn't get that job was the the, the, the win. I, I, I was told I was cocky, right? <laughs> and I remember the question, and I probably didn't articulate myself the way I should have, but it was this question. Tell me about a time you failed and you, how you handled it. So it wasn't real failure then is what you gave him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I, you know, to be honest, I don't think of, like, I, I don't feel like I fail when things don't go right. You, you, know, you learn from like it. It's like a learning experience. Yeah, exactly. And so to be honest with you, I can't really, you know, I, and I just kind of left it at that. Maybe it was my nerves, right? I, mm-hmm. could have pro- I, I should have provided an example. Like, oh, this didn't go right. This is how I handled it. This right. is what I learned. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't do that. And, uh, <laughs> therefore, I'm cocky. Oh, well. And then uh, I met a guy at Caribou in Monticello. And he was, he caught my attention. I don't know what he was doing. And I'm like, what do you do? He said he works for Kaifon. Hmm. Who got bought out by Medtronic or something? There was like spine a, work, yeah, 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 yeah kyphoplasty, yeah, yep. And I uh, talked to him, and uh, yeah, that that interview didn't go past one interview, apparently. <laughs> but uh, whatever, still cocky. Uh, no, no, <laughs> he he felt like he wants his salespeople to be like in debt, super hungry, super aggressive. Need the money? Like, yeah, this like. <laughs> All about the dollar. Go, go, go. He's like, I love it when they buy a new boat and then <laughs> it puts them in debt because now they got to work harder to pay off the boat, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I guess I didn't give him that impression. Uh, well, you're too practical. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Here I am doing a podcast. <laughs> uh, so uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? You love it? It's, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely been a pretty major factor in my life right yeah. uh big learning experience so when yeah. i first got there it was beaches surfing uh a lot of fun 
But, uh, you know, as, as I became part so of... So why does my mind go to the women? <laughs> I can't say that on here. <laughs> Your wife's going to listen My wife's later. very excited to hear this podcast. So. Oh, is she from Puerto Rico? Uh, I met her there. She's Dominican. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. For some reason, I have this impression, like, Puerto Rican women are beautiful. They are. I've never been. Very much so. Yeah. Yes. I should go. You should go. You should go. I should go. I'm single. Yeah. You should yeah. definitely go. Yeah. Yeah. That should be the winter break vacation with my boys. That would be, <laughs> that's exactly that's, correct. There's yeah. women for all ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, women still have cooties at 10 11. <laughs> uh, Yeah. That's no. not bad. Yeah. So but yeah, surfing? You like surfing? Well, I obviously never did until I yeah. got there, but uh, yeah. I kind of fell in. It was like a lot of fun. Oh, it's it's the coolest thing I've ever done. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Like it, it's it's an excuse to be in really good shape and also be kind of an idiot. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so now you live down there full time. Yep, yeah. Yeah. I've been there for twelve years. So um, what yeah. are you doing back here? Just came up here for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly. Wow. Yeah. No. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so I, I'm up here probably three to four months a year. So I'm from here originally, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I have two plants up here. We opened a new one in January. So there's okay. been quite a bit of, obviously, oversight on that and come up. Where's the new plant? Right next to the old plant? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, right in Maple Plain, down 12. So are you expanding or just kind of aborting the old building? Nope. It's a, it's a whole new uh, vector. So oh. this, is, this is... You're expanding. Here you guys are. Expanding, yep. yep. Growing. Growing. What, how many employees you guys have now? 178 yeah i mean we'd be at 200 if we could find them <laughs> oh that's a problem for you still yep. yeah it's yeah. it's it's getting a little better um yeah. but you know in in both both here and in puerto rico i mean it, the, the worst is, in puerto rico oh yeah huh. yep. is this a worldwide thing you think puerto rico just uh increased their minimum wage so okay. we're still feeling out what the market is for for people so okay you know, when they when they raise minimum wage by four dollars, you know, that's to, a jump, huh? It's a pretty big jump. So, yeah, yeah. And here, people will move as a machinist for a dollar to an hour to a different company to a different company do yeah. the same job. It's very similar. So in Puerto Rico, they'll actually drive the entire island for a dollar or two more an hour. Yeah. So wow. I mean, it's really making sure you bring people in and kind of create that culture that they want to stay with. Yeah. Mm. Have you been to Puerto Rico? But six times this year. Yeah. Six times this year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you like it? I, oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm also looking for a place in Puerto Rico. So there oh, you go. Like a second home? Yes. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. How much are flights? Uh, four or 500. That's it? Yeah. They, it depends they got, on who you go with. But they've yeah. got directs on Thursdays and Saturdays from Delta. And then oh, on, yeah? and directs on Saturdays from Sun Country. So there you go. <laughs> That's true. But I'm trying to get Delta points here. Yeah, I, know, I know how you operate. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this, this Puerto Rico thing is going to sound so bad. You know, I was thinking about doing that cruise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you made a good point, you know, it's being stuck, like stuck in a hotel for a week. Yeah. They let you off the boat every once in a while when they do portaging, right? Right. Yep. And then you have a day to go do whatever. So yeah. San Juan, Puerto Rico is one of the bigger hubs. So they yep. launch, a lot of cruises launch out of there. So you could do a double whammy. Come down, you know, surf, uh, surf for a couple of days. Meet go to some, Rincon. Go to Rincon. Uh, and then, I got an idea. Go to Puerto Rico with my boys and mm -hmm. do like, while we're there for whatever, five, six days, take surfing lessons and learn how to surf. Like that's our quest, right? right. Mm -hmm. that, that'd fill most of our day. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you can do that right next to the airport. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Isla Verde. Yeah, Isla Verde has a nice, call it PG-13. It's a good learning wave. So yeah, yeah. It's small waves. Right in San Juan. That's where, I, that's where I caught my first wave. Was it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're snowboarders, so surfing, psh, easy. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> it's a little different. Did you snowboard before? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. If it's a board, I ride it. So okay. uh, big, big skateboarder, big yeah. snowboarder, wakeboarder. Now, uh, body doesn't like the wakeboarding as much, so I do the, the wake skate when I'm up here, this, the wake surfing. Yeah, wake, yeah, yeah, it's a lot um, slower, yeah. lower impact. But, it, like, none of those have anything on, like, the physical requirements for surfing. Really? Yeah. I mean, imagine paddling for your life for two and a half hours. Yeah, that'd be a workout. <laughs> yep. Do you suggest starting off on one of those big boards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those big, big ones? Yep. Sturdy. Standing height, just learn how to pop up. Yep. Even though most surfing is you just trying to get where you get to pop up. You mm -hmm. know? Right. Catch the you wave know, enough. When I was good at surfing, you'd surf for two hours and like six to eight waves you'd actually catch. So oh, wow. it's a lot of investment, but that one wave is pretty fun. Makes it worth it. <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah. Every yeah. time. Sweet. All right, so more business stuff. Let's see. <clears throat> see access. Are you just going to stay focused on the uh, medical 
device side of things? Or are you thinking about expanding into anything else? We used to do uh, various different uh, sectors, right? We, okay. we did some, um, we did aerospace. We actually used to do all the, uh, the, uh, the gyroscopes for the Hellfire missile. And mm -hmm. so we, we, we did a lot of different stuff, but as, as all these regulatory bodies came into existence and, and they really started pushing, um, diversifying them. It used to be kind of, if you were under this 9001, you could do, you know, you could do aerospace, you could do medical and they're vastly different now. So essentially, you know, it'd be diluting, you'd, you'd be adding more overhead from a quality standpoint, running two quality systems and being audible on both. So yeah. um, for us right now, there's zero interest. You know, we have so much growth. We, we're growing as fast as we can. I think this year we have 40% growth up here. Um, cow. Yeah, One I mean, here? Yeah. It, that's booked. That's not even new work. Jeez. So, um, you know, and we... Why? We, is this, a, you guys are just that good or is there something else going on in the industry? Like like I was saying earlier, there's a big lag between you know development and then processing, validation, and then production. So yeah. uh, essentially, COVID happened. It was this virus. I don't know if you were around. I think, um, yeah, yeah, yeah I that one. That, that was yeah. I still got some masks in my car. Um, <laughs> so that happened, and essentially, you know, all non-essential elective surgeries went away. Right. Oh, so that's about so half of our stuff. On those. So yeah. what all the what all our customers did who were doing that stuff is they went to major R and D. Okay. So oh. during during COVID and and the last few years, we developed and validated a bunch of new products where our sales and all, everything else kind of went away. So this year, January first is kind of the coinciding of both of those things fully taking off. Oh, that's so exciting. mature products or products that are going to market and then also mature products coming back. So it's kind of a perfect storm. So we're going, we're going from like, honestly, this quarter, we're going to be up by like 40% Q1 of next year. So Jeez. we have to figure that out. Yeah. Hire some more <laughs> and hire more we people. Need, yeah. we, need, we need to hire more people then. Yeah. I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you call HR? I've already talked to them. <laughs> <laughs> So if they want to work for you, I think when I went on your website, there was a pop-up that said, you know, apply here. Yeah. yeah. Like that was the very first thing when I went to your website. We have a huge focus on anything branding wise as far as people come work for us, please. Yeah. Our, our marketing specialist um, she does a thought, great job. thought she'd be working in marketing as a whole, but she's really just been in HR for about a year. <laughs> she's uh, gotten really good at social media yes, posts. Yeah. Please come work for us. <laughs> is that where most of them are coming from? Social media, would you say? Well, we spend a lot of time on like LinkedIn and, and any yeah. of those areas, indeed. And she she cleans up any post that goes out there. So it's we're trying to make an impact, especially for younger people. That's you know she's younger, have a little more of a direct connection to those people. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So some of the positions on the website say accounting clerk, shipping and receiving, secondary operations one, temp quality inspector one, machine operator one. Weekend shift PM Swiss machinist. Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, weekend shift AM Swiss machinist. Mm -hmm. Machine operator one. Secondary operator one. Machinist one. Mm -hmm. So there you go, listeners. If you need a job, we have a lot. Give these guys a shot. <laughs> um, so, Dennis, how'd you get in your position? You are the director of business. Development director of business development. It's a fancy way of saying sales and marketing. <laughs> sales and marketing. Yeah. Okay. So even in my title, I've decided to sales it up. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, so basically, I've been in the industry 25 years. I started off as an R&D engineer for a company that got, if you go through many iterations, acquired by Medtronic. So, yeah. so we all go back to Medtronic at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Right. Um, did that for about three years. And what were you doing with them? Uh, I was the R and D lab manager. So R and D I, lab manager. Yes. So prior to that, I was in the Air Force. Oh, I, I was in the Army. No. Oh, so yeah. thank you for your service. Yeah, likewise, yes. Veterans Day was just a couple of days ago. Just a few days ago. Yes. Yeah. As, as we always say, it was our honor to serve. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we appreciate each other more. What did you do in the Air Force? Uh, I worked with the U two program, so avionics mostly. But huh. yeah, I was a medic. Ah, that makes sense with the chiropractor portion of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So um, anyway, after the military, after Air Force, my first job, just kind of moving back from California to Minnesota, back at the time when we had to, you know, connect with the <laughs> internet. from Minnesota? Yeah, I grew up in Duluth. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so Love I'm, Duluth. Yeah, so northern Minnesota guy, I grew, I grew up in Duluth, 
uh, went to school, joined the military. When we got out, my wife and I are moving back. Now, did you uh, join the military right out of high school or did no, you go to college first? I went to St. Cloud State first. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you graduated from there? I did not. Did as, you party as, your way right out of there? As many people who went to St. Cloud State can say, <laughs> I did not graduate there. <laughs> I, I graduated from Concordia, and that's a whole separate story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, I went to high school in Annandale. No, oh, yeah, sorry. Not yeah. far from St. Cloud. Sure. So a lot of my friends went to St. Cloud State. Yes. Man, and I used to go up there and party with those guys. It was that, crazy. Th- that, yep, yeah, that was a wild time. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. That so I my first year was ninety one. I know I'm giving away my age here, but first well, year where at St. Cloud State. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I graduated high school in ninety two. Yeah, so we're about we're the same close. age. Yeah, uh, so dude, I've what, probably seen you at the Rocks or DB Sarrells or something, or the red carpet. We <laughs> yeah, go through the, yeah. go through the list, but <laughs> I've seen you there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the Twins won the World Series that fall when we were there and it, that was the craziest partying situation i've ever seen in my life kids were turning over cars in the parking lot just oh, for yeah. no reason it was yeah. that's saint cloud in a nutshell <laughs> yeah yep, it yeah. is okay so out of high school you went to saint cloud state then yep. you went to concordia yes then you went to the air force i went to the air force then i went to concordia oh okay. when i came back it was but I, I already had a job lined up because of the fancy internet at the time you could go online and find things in other areas uh, aol aol dial up kind of internet something like that it was yeah. a long time ago so yep uh, i had a, when i showed up i already had an opportunity to interview had was given the job on the spot so i worked for this company called microvina which, like I said, through many iterations, is now part of Medtronic. Okay. So it started there. I also worked then after that. I got called back to active duty after 9-11. Really? Yes. Um, so, But most of that time was spent uh, through the 148th out of Duluth. They sent me out to Virginia for a year where we did, you know. Relief ca- duty for active? It was Civil Air Patrol missions they were okay. doing. So you were you're flying 16s to make sure that the airspace was safe, basically, for about a year afterward. Hmm. So my army contract was up uh, about a week before the towers went down. Yeah. So you you definitely. So I was on a six by two contract. They called it. I was in the reserve at the time, right? So your active duty reserve, you do the weekend a month type thing, and then I did that for six years, and then your name is on a list for two years uh, to get called back up in case all hell breaks loose. Well, my six years was up. Two weeks later. The towers go down. So you get stop loss. I'm like, well, yeah. uh, <laughs> this isn't good. You know, I'm going to be going somewhere. And luckily I didn't. About a year later, my unit dis- they did get activated. They had to go to Bosnia and do some relief duty for the active. So then they could go to Afghanistan or wherever right. they were going. Right. Uh, but they never called us back. Never called me back. And my mom was so worried, man. Negative. I'm an only child. And yeah, she's like, yeah. If you get any certified whatever in the mail, don't even pick it up. <laughs> well, I, call it I don't think it works that I way. I don't think right? that's yeah, I'm, I don't not think a, that's possible. I'm not a lawyer. No. Yeah, no, I don't think that would keep me out of active duty. Yeah, so, yeah. well, it was an interesting time nonetheless. So right? How long were you reactivated for? One year and then year. And, mo- and three year, three and a half months of it was at Langley, Virginia. So Okay. And the rest of the time was in Duluth, which wasn't terrible. Yeah, right. And so I was just it's going back and forth. Yeah. yeah. So when I get done with that, I, when I started in contract manufacturing, prior to that, I was mostly on the actual OEM side. And I started off with a company at the time called UTI, which sounds like a terrible Urinary thing. Urinary tract infection. Yeah, well, wh- why would you yeah. be called that in a medical company? But that, that's what they were called. It stood for Uniform Tubes Incorporated, and they were out of Pennsylvania. Hmm. They got acquired by a venture capital firm and put together a small group of companies. And then they bought a company, it was a Minnesota-based company called Med- MedSource. We combined the two companies. We had 19 facilities were billions of dollars, uh, were 500 million. Their value was a billion dollars and uh, became Excellent, which was a big company here in the Twin Cities. They got reacquired by a company called uh, KKR out of the East Coast, which is another venture capital firm, which is this is a lot of junk. And uh, basically started buying up every contract manufacturer they could. And they were the first ones to actually do that. Mm. And, and now that's become, there's a lot of small ones that do that who've become kind of our biggest competitors, which actually makes it easy for us because like Jared said, they're, they're the companies that started doing the, we'll only take a million dollar PO mm-hmm. where we'll be coming in and being able to provide a service level that they can't just because of the huge bureaucracy and having 19 facilities to deal with where we can be much more intimate in our interactions with the customer, so. Wow. 
those venture capitalists, man, they, they, they'll pay top dollar for stuff, won't they? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> back then, it, it's changed. It, it evolves and changes over the years, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're uh, after insurance agencies right now mm-hmm. and books of business. And uh, typically, an insurance agency might be worth one and a half times the revenue, right? Yep. Right now, you get like double because these venture capitalists are one to uh, get into it. We had we had a company recently, uh, a little bigger than us, but didn't they they had twenty times EBITDA? Twenty four times twenty four times EBITDA. In our space, it's about six to six to eight would be standard the yeah. valuations. I mean, that's obviously you got to yeah, go right, through the books. Twenty four. Yeah, right now you're seeing fourteen to eighteen is pretty standard, but yeah. twenty four was like a record breaker. Crazy. Yeah. It's a full time job deleting emails from them. Yeah, they every time we do by you. every time yeah. we do an event, that's we're like, you know, just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> I get a lot of free beer at those events. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I'm trying to butter you up. Tell a me bit. more about how you. great I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am pretty great. <laughs> One more, please. Thank you. <laughs> wow, well, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so is there anything on the website you want me to reference and? Uh, uh, so we we talked about the the openings. So we got the about careers, capabilities, contract. Well, careers are important. We we established that pretty yeah. solidly. That's yeah. the other thing about the website is, is what we tried to do here is we're not trying to appeal to machinists. We're trying to appeal to people who need a machinist. Mm. So if you have a product that you're trying to manufacture and you're not exactly sure how to do it, go to the website and see if we have something that makes sense to you. Yeah. So what, didn't you say there was like kind of three stages to this? Like if I, if I got an idea and uh, I need 500 parts made, you guys will help me design it. Yeah. Right? And so, get the approval and, and that's manufacture it. That's what yeah. Jared was speaking about earlier. So this center we have here now in Maple Plain, we call it the C axis 360. It's a full rebranding, different facility. And that purposefully was done so that we could have manufacturing equipment available to us outside of the day to day running of equipment, making sure we're meeting deliveries for the, our major production customers. What that gives us is the ability to help out people on the front end to do things fast. And then we've, Jared's brainchild, I know I'm giving you too much credit here. Jared's brainchild on top of this was, let's find a way to do more than one iteration of a design because machine components tend to be the highest cost of anything within the bill material that most of our customers use with. So if they come in and go, hey, I have this idea, but I'm not sure it's gonna work and I might have to do some tweaks. The normal way we would do that was, You'd send in a part, we would do it, you'd send it back. You'd take three weeks to test it. You'd come up with a new iteration, send it to us, send it back. And we would do this five, six times. And all of a sudden you're 18 months along. Mm -hmm. So Jared had a project that he was working on probably two years ago with a very large uh, OEM customer that did this for a year and a half. And then finally he said, you know what? Please come into our facility. We'll give you an engineer. did it for a year and a half with you guys? Yeah, going back and forth, just yeah. sending part. You know, here's here's the drawing, make this. Yeah. Here's your parts, go test it. Yeah. Here's another drawing, here's another drawing. And we Keep basically... Keep tweaking it. Yeah, and that process, you're losing time. And that's what's yeah. most valuable as you try to go to market. So Jerry came up with the idea, well, why don't you come in? We'll make, we'll have the machine set up. You show us all the different ideas you have for iteration. Let's make a few of them. Well, a few of them turned into 31 parts. We didn't... Dang, two, I was going to guess like five. No, it was 31 parts we did in two weeks. And then they walked out with a design lock in two weeks that nice. they hadn't been able to get to in 18 months prior to that. So all, that was the brainchild uh-huh. of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's where 3-axis 360 came into play. And now we're trying to, we're being selective because you only have so much time and availability in machines of who we interact with for that. But we are finding that it's, uh, everywhere we go, is, they're very excited about this opportunity. And on top of that, we're trying to do parts and turning them around in two weeks. Most, mm-hmm. most often the lead time for machine parts is six to eight weeks. Or ten to twelve weeks, depending on the iteration. So, right. Do you, you know, I, for some reason, I got this this vision in my mind. Tell me if this has ever happened. <clears throat> so, the it's a the, it's a doctor. He does knee replacements for a living, and he's like, man, this this implant would be so much better if we would do this a little different or tweak this. But he's a doctor, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But he's like. I know it would work way better if they'd come up with a new design. So he just says the heck with it. And he calls you guys. He's like, hey, this is what we're using now. I want to do something similar, but change these couple of things. Can you guys help me? Yes. Does that happen? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We actually helped a dentist come out with a new dental implant a few years ago. 
So that's cool. Those are a little more difficult because of the they don't have the their design portion of it, and so yeah. and we're not technically design owners. That's a different uh, risk level. Okay. <laughs> but I uh, know we for sure. You know, any level. You know, we the OEMs are kind of who we focus on. But you know, mm -hmm. we we have very small uh, small houses that have come up with just kind of a you know napkin sketch, and that's actually where we prefer to get in. Okay. Once an engineer's created a print, he really it's like his baby. Yeah. And then when I when I when I tell him that it's expensive and it's a better way to do it, then he says we'll figure it out. And then it's expensive. So yeah. um so that's that's actually part of why we wanted to get to where we are because the the design phase of these things takes so long for us and for the customer. You know, I, our our average cycle of when we first quote a part to when we actually make a part that can be used for human implant. Imp implantation yeah any sort of human interaction I interaction probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it's at least a year probably but 18 months is about more accurate <clears throat> and six months of that is like dennis said we quote it and then we usually have some feedback like this is silly and they're like just make it and then we make it and we're like it oh it was right it was silly like oh no like here's your new price like oh no and then <laughs> then we go back they test i requote they say it's too expensive then we finally have that meeting we're, we're two months in three months in and then it's still back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part, one of the things about our facility is, yeah, we basically set it up because if you ever have uh, prototype equipment in a manufacturing environment, your production team will steal it and they will do production on it. Really? You have to actually yeah. move it out of the building because that's where they make their money. <clears throat> They're not looking at the pipeline. They're not looking at two years down the road. Like this, the, our growth that we discussed earlier, that's yeah. because we invested in this facility. Huh. It does, this facility doesn't need to make money. It makes the money elsewhere. Okay. And so, um, you know, but we took, uh, we've done three case studies now. We've done more iterations, but three case studies. And on average, you know, we take the design cycle from six months to three weeks. Jeez. And on average, we're doing, you know. Yeah. And, and you think about the cost in that six months, they're spending over $150,000, $200,000 just on the samples to get to design lock. And you can rent our facility for fifty dollars to $100,000 to do this whole thing. So yeah. you actually spend less. You spend more early, but overall less, less time. And it's way easier for us. You know, we, we, have op, we literally have empty offices, design, CAD, CAM, uh, programming, techs, program management, all sitting there, offices open, bring your whole team in. Hmm. You know, they come in, pull test, whatever their testing requirements are, get a part off the machine, test it, don't like it, go make an offset, make a new one. Just right there right that now. That same yeah. day. Yeah. So it's a lot of real expensive equipment sitting there, not running a lot. Well, yeah. And we live in such a perfect area for it too, right? So Minnesota's medical alley, I don't know if mm -hmm. you've heard that statement before, but on top of that, when they, if let's say they need to do an actual, we're going to make a part and then we're going to put it into some sort of, in vitro model, whether it be, oh, that's him. Whether that sounds like a Puerto Rico ring. It was. It was. <laughs> it's bad bunny. Puerto Rico is calling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gotta take this. <laughs> right. What was I saying? Oh, so there's actually labs here that you can do. They can do, make a heartbeat on a table, so you can have the doctors come in and do the test if we're like placing some implant into the heart. Let's say they're doing like a left atrial appendage. They could actually do that after we did the iteration and then come back and have instant feedback because we have so much availability of that here. There's three yeah. companies. He's, I can he's referencing there's a, there's a company over here. There's two of them. It's really could, cool. Yeah. But they bring corpses back to life and I've seen it. It's it, terrifying. What? He always yeah. says it's going to be the walking it's Frankenstein. dead. Frankenstein. <laughs> it's there. Crazy. Yeah. Stay yeah, away from that place. It's, they don't bring the full corpse. They just bring parts of it. But yeah. For now. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have the availability to do that. A bunch of zombies walking around. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, you can, but it's a great way to test your device. Device in a, in a way that you can have proof back and in a, in a setting where the doctors can give you feedback on how it feels and everything yeah. else as well. So all these things line up very nicely for what we've created at, at the Maple right. Plain facility. And it's actually really cool. I don't and mean, to, call, I don't mean cool. to call them zombies, but it is kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like to me, uh, C-axis claim to fame somewhat is... If you look for some kind of medical device in the small to mid range production and you want to get it to market as quickly as possible, right? Yes. That's the like next. you guys are the best there. We're we're up there. Yeah, yeah I would say that you know, I we were going through my background, I've worked for all the bigger players and that was the one thing that they all missed. They didn't have that ability to 
have the quick turn prototype center yeah. and they didn't want to invest in it because it didn't make value to them. They had such a big pipeline because they were so big. The what now integer excellence, the RMSs, the, they have $200 million already in sales. So they have such a big pipeline with the big players, the Medtronics, the Boston's, whoever, that they get that business and they get the chance to win it where we work our way in because we help them on the front end with this value of quick help. Let's get some costs out of it and drive it from the beginning. So you have a manufacturer product in a fast manner in your R and D space. Yeah. That, that, and we take on projects that they all say no to Yeah, you know, for, for difficulty. So that's kind of, re- and that's part of the, the niche of being <clears throat> in the U S American made kind of thing is yeah. you know, we, we don't compete in commodity, right? I'm not making, I'm not making millions and millions of little brass fittings um, that we can't be competitive yeah. where we are competitive is, you know, we, we, we make what most people know quote, we make stuff that even sometimes I'm like, I don't know how we did that. Well, right. uh, but you know, we, we, we enjoy it. It's fun. It's part of the challenge. It's, it's what I'm into. Right. So it's fun to get in the machine and, and, and create new methods of manufacturing and, you know, basically hot wire these these pieces of equipment we buy from from a, a manufacturer and completely change what it's actually used for and, oh, okay. and create new processes so that's that's where most of our most of our products come from is is you know outside the box making some stuff that you know usually even we no quote <laughs> but yeah. you know that's that's where we really do a lot for the customers is they show me a print and I'm like we can't do this but let's talk about how you want to do it and then we get in the lab, we start pulling stuff out, and we find a middle ground with them to meet what their device requires versus yeah. them trying to dictate what they need. Okay. So marrying the two ideas of design and the medical side of it with the actual manufacturing side of it. So we bring that expertise and a lot of knowledge in the medical. But, <clears throat> you know, the designers, most of the designers are guys who learned, uh, you know, SolidWorks and want to see how cool that software can be. Yeah. And create a bunch of features that aren't really manufacturable. Yeah, and so sure. we're kind sure. of we're, we kind of translate what their ideas are into something that can be actually made. Cool. So you're missing a part of that too. That C axis, the Haley family has done very well over the years too. Is they've invested in the best of the technology. Jared's as he is says, he's a self proclaimed nerd, and so if there's a cool new Swiss machine or a cool, he's going to make sure that we're on the front end of getting that. Yeah. <laughs> I keep getting yelled at because I keep buying stuff that we don't work for. <laughs> my, my controller is always a fan. <laughs> it's like, are, what are we going to make on that? I don't know. I don't know. Everything. It's really it's cool. So man. cool. We got to have you, one. Yeah. 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 So I've done that a few times and, you know, we always find a use for it because that technology. He will buy it. I'll make them come. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that, it, like w- one day it's out on the floor. I'm like, Dennis, we don't have work for this. What's going on? I've been <laughs> waiting a whole day. On this thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So awesome. Well, uh, probably should wrap it up here. Is there anything else you want to mention before we uh, close shop? No, no, we hit it all. No, I think it was, it was. All right, so listeners, just just remember, if you're looking for a job of any sort, these guys are hiring because they are Please. growing fast, forty percent over last year, which is crazy. I wish I could say that same thing. Good for you guys. Uh, if you want to check them out, their website is c dash axis a x i s dot com and that's the letter c so again it's c dash access dot com well uh dennis and jared thanks for coming i appreciate your time here again thanks for having us yeah thanks a lot appreciate the time Yeah. yeah thanks for listening guys thanks for listening to the american made podcast Want to be a guest on American Made or know someone who should be? Apply online at theamericanmadepodcast.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app to be notified when new episodes become available. And we'll see you next time on American Made.